Welcome to A Change of Heart Podcast. I'm your host, Angel Walston. And in this space, we navigate life together. We ask the hard questions like, what is the truth you haven't told? But most importantly, we grow together. And sometimes that leads to A Change of Heart. Hey everyone, welcome back to A Change of Heart Podcast. I am your host, Angel. And if you're tuning in for the first time, hey girl, hey. If you're a returning listener, hey girl, welcome back to the body. Today we are going to be talking about preparing while you're waiting. And I feel like this is a necessary discussion because I know for a lot of people, um, you're just in a space of transition, but not really sure what's next. Or you're in a space where you are believing for something, you know what is next, but you're not quite there yet. So you're just kind of like in this waiting period. And I know how frustrating that can be and discouraging even at times. So we're going to talk about it. But before we get there, typically I would do a question of the day. However, y'all, I'm still kind of on the struggle bus when it comes to social media. And I just don't feel like we're posting responses on all of that today. So instead, what we're going to do, I said that if I didn't do a question of the day, I would do a little story time. So we're going to do a little story time this morning. Okay. So... One of my friends sent me a post by this girl on Instagram. It's at Isabella Camille underscore, I believe. And she is she posted about doing this 75 day like. I feel like it's just like a recommitment to herself. I'm probably not explaining it in the way that she did. But for the next 75 days, she is working out every day for 45 minutes. And I was like, oh, girl, you go, girl. You got it, sis. I ain't doing that, but you got it, sis. She's reading 10 pages from a book every day, um, like clean eating, unless it's like something celebratory. Oh, no, no, it's clean eating in general, no alcohol, unless it's something celebratory. And I was like, you know what? I need a heavy reset. And so I'm thinking about doing just kind a of 60 like a day journey just to recommit to myself, recommit to God. And just kind of like refocus some things because I feel like I've just been a little bit... I, I, listen, we go call it call a spade a spade. I kind of been doing like whatever I want to a little bit, and I need to like recorrect some habits as far as like eating. I need to recorrect some habits as far as just how I spend my time, just balancing things a little bit better. And so I'm very interested in doing this, and I'm still trying to figure out like what exactly does that look like. And so I may or may not share it. For y'all to kind of like, if you want to join and be a part of it, you can do it too. I don't know. I'm on the fence about it. Y'all let me know if that would be something you're interested in. But one of the things that I do want to do is um, some type of devotion on the YouVersion app as well while I'm doing it. And so that's something I am considering doing, like opening up to other people to be a part of so we can just have like that accountability and also just share like what we're learning as we are reading, having our quiet time, devotion, all of that. So that's, that's not even really a story time. It's just kind of like a little life update. So that's that. All right, y'all. So let's go ahead and jump into today's topic about preparing while you wait. So as I mentioned earlier, I know for a lot of people, as I'm just talking to women, I feel like a lot of us are just kind of in this space of transition and transition in a lot of different ways. So for some people, it's transition as far as like your job is transition as far as like your lifestyle is transition as far as relationships. It's, it's transition as far as mindset, your relationship with God, just trying to change different things. And a lot of us are in like we're in the thick of it into the thick of it. (laughs) Like we are right in the middle of it. And it's like, I know I say this all of the time, but it's that weird space of you're not yet at your end goal, right? You're not yet at the place that you want to be, but you're not where you started at either. But while you're in that middle place, that middle ground of trying to get to the next place, you're in this waiting period, essentially, like you're in this waiting room. And if you've ever been to a doctor's appointment, if you've ever been to the DMV, if you've ever had to go, and if you've ever had to wait in any form or fashion, you know you start to get anxious, you start to get antsy, you start to get irritated the longer you have to wait and you're not at the destination that you essentially want to be at. And so I want to talk about that because I think a lot of times we we miss out on the opportunity to prepare for what we're waiting on. And we miss out on the opportunity to actually do the work 
that can be done in the waiting period because we're trying to do the work once we get there. And a lot of things are harder to sustain when you get to the place that you want to be at when you didn't prepare for it prior to getting there. All right. So the first thing that I want to talk about in relation to preparing while you're waiting is the need to be willing to shed. And what I mean by this is being willing to let go of certain things, being willing to have honest conversations about things that you're doing, people that are attached to you, anything that is essentially keeping you from getting to where you're trying to go. And I am not one of those people that feels like you have to cut everybody off. You got to, you know, get rid of everything, do a whole clean swipe of things. However, comma, there are certain situations where you have to be able to have enough wisdom to see that there are some things, there are some habits, there are some routines, there are some opinions that are associated with the things that I've done, that I've been doing. There are people who essentially are the reason why I am remaining in the same place that I'm trying to get out of. And actually, let me rephrase that. You're ultimately the reason as to why you are remaining in the same place, because a lot of times it's based off of choices, right? Let's call a thing a thing. But there are things and people that we have allowed ourselves to hold on to, that we have allowed ourselves to create patterns with that keep us in a place that we are ultimately trying to get out of. Sometimes when you're in a space of waiting, it's not because there's a delay. It's not because you need more time. It's not because you aren't qualified. For some of you, it really is because you have things attached to you that you need to let go of. And that was a hard lesson for me and still at times a hard lesson because I have found myself staying in things that I really don't want to do or committing to things that I really don't want to do to keep the peace, to not rock the boat. And we've talked about this before in past episodes. And I have found myself getting frustrated in situations that it's like, you ain't supposed to be in that anyways, girl. Like, what are you doing? And for a lot of people, specifically women, I feel like we tend to stay in situations that have expired. We tend to stay in places with people in situations that no longer serve us. And it's not even a thing of that is something wrong with the person or the situation, whatever it may be, is a bad or negative thing. But I genuinely do believe that you have grace for certain seasons of your life. And sometimes that expires and there's nothing wrong with that. But we can be in a position where we end up getting comfortable where we are. And so we stay in situations that we have outgrown and we end up trying to make something fit that no longer works for us. You think about it in the sense of a child as they're getting older. As they get older, their clothes size get bigger, their shoe size gets bigger. But if you're still trying to put a two-year-old in their six-month-old clothes, it's going to look a little crazy. It's not going to fit. It's going to be uncomfortable because they're in a position that it's like, I've outgrown this. This no longer fits. It's nothing wrong with the clothes. Somebody else can even fit them. But it's no longer appropriate for that child because they've grown out of that. They've outgrown that. And a lot of us are staying in situations or we're remaining comfortable in spaces that we've outgrown and we don't even realize that we've outgrown them or that we need to shed them and let them be at this point because we have become uncomfortable in a space that we're still trying to make work, that we're still trying to fit into, that we're still trying to conform to, that we're still trying to make sense of, that we know it don't make sense. We know this ain't it. Like we know that we need to shed. We know we need to let go of these things. But it's like, I've always done this. This is familiar. This is comfortable. So let me figure out how to make something work that really isn't working or it really isn't serving you any longer. So I just want to challenge you as you are in this space of waiting and preparing for what your next is. Is it truly that you don't know what your next is for you or are you in a space where you are allowing the things that you are used to, the things that you have always done, the things that have kept you comfortable, the things that are familiar to you, are you allowing those things to keep you in a position that's actually making you wait longer than you really need to be? Because some of you are trying to talk yourself out of your necks because you feel like you're not ready. And God's like, girl, you've been ready. 
I'm, I'm waiting on you. You're not waiting on me to take you to your next place. You're not waiting on me to give you direction, clarity, none of that. You know what's next. You know what is before you. You just feel like you're not capable of it. You feel like, I'm, I, mm-mm. no, that can't be for me. Like, God, you got me mixed up with one of your other daughters. Like, And we really will sit here and talk ourselves out of it. But it's like, you've done the work. And for some of you, you're in your head so much that you feel like you're not deserving of your next because you feel like I still have so much more work to do. And listen, that can be true. But also understand that you've done the work to get to where you are right now. The fact that there's more work for you to do, that doesn't negate the work that has been done. It doesn't change what you've already done. It doesn't change how you've already healed, even though you still need further healing. It doesn't change the fact that growth is here, okay? Growth has already taken place, even though there's still room for you to grow. We're always going to be in a space where we are changing, evolving, growing. I know I say this all the time. A lot of these things I say in the podcast, I repeat it because we know it, but we don't catch it. And sometimes you have to keep hearing it for you to be like, okay, you know what? Maybe maybe I need to listen to this. Maybe I need to do something differently. Maybe I actually need to take heed to this. Because you have to understand the fact that you are a person, a woman who is growing, who is evolving, who is healing, who is being shaped and molded, that does not disqualify you from getting to your next place. It prepares you. So don't allow yourself to talk yourself out of your next because you feel like, well, I still have all of this work that has to be done. We all got work to do. We're always going to be in a space that we are, or we should always be in a space where we're striving to become better, right? That's a healthy mindset. That's a good thing. When it becomes negative is when we start talking ourselves out of what we are already qualified for, what we're already deserving of, what we're already worthy of, as is. Not when I become this, not when I get here, not when I finally, none of that. Who you are as is, is ready. Who you are right now, as of today, you are qualified. Don't allow yourself to talk yourself out of that because you feel like there's still all of this other stuff that I have to do. And that's the real gag right there, y'all. That's probably one of the biggest mindsets that you have to shed when you're trying to go to your next and why you're in that season of preparation, because a lot of what is keeping you in the waiting period is your negative self-talk. It's what's going on in your head. It's not the fact that you're not ready. It's not the fact that there's more that needs to be done. It's it's none of that. It really is you convincing yourself that you're not deserving of. You're not ready. It's not it's not for you. And it's like let's let's go ahead and address that now because as God elevates you, as he stretches you, as he takes you out of places that are very comfortable for you and puts you into places and rooms that you never thought you were deserving of or that you never thought that you would be in. There's also a level of confidence that you want to have going into it so that you don't revert back to what you've always done, what you've always known. And so in this period of preparation, even though you may not be in the place that you want to be, don't wait to show up as your best self or the fullness of all of who you are and were created to be when you get there. Start working on that now. Start preparing your mind for where you're going. Start acting like you're in the place that you want to be because we think that we're just a switch is just going to go off and we're just going to show up and be confident and be bold and just come in here and take over and do everything, do all of the things. And a lot of times we end up getting overstimulated. We get overwhelmed. We get anxious. And then we feel like I'm in over my head. I don't know what I'm doing. I didn't sign up for this. I made a mistake. I went like, God, where are you? We have this whole bunch of, we have all of this anxiety surrounding something that's for us. Don't allow the old mindsets that you've carried and don't allow different things or people or even environments that you are in to keep you from getting to your next because you feel like you're not worthy, deserving of, or because you are holding on to things that you really do need to let go of. And as I mentioned earlier about struggling with doing things and accepting things that I really didn't want to do, I would encourage you to look at What is on my to-do list? What is on my calendar right now that I've said yes to, that one I ain't talked to God about, and or that I really don't want to do? Because some of you, 
the reason why you're still in a place of waiting is because your calendar is full of things that you're not even supposed to be doing. Your to-do list is full of things that were never, ever supposed to be a part of your day-to-day, but you taxed on, you've taken on all of these different things that you won't ever supposed to be doing. And then you wonder why you're in a place of waiting. You don't have time for your next. You don't have room for it. We have to create room for where we're going to next because otherwise you end up, what's supposed to be a blessing, you end up feeling burnt out by it. You end up feeling frustrated with it. You end up feeling like this is too much. You feel overwhelmed. What are you holding on to? What are you carrying? What is on your calendar right now that you said yes to out of obligation, that you said yes to out of people pleasing, that you said yes to because you don't want to let other people down, but it's really not for you anymore. Make peace with disconnecting at times when it's necessary. Make peace with telling people no and not feeling guilty about it. I get it, y'all. Trust me when I say I get it. Make peace with stepping away or stepping back from things that is no longer a good fit for you. You don't have to apologize for that. And I think sometimes we can get in our head and we, we're we so concerned about letting people down or feeling like, oh, well, if I don't do it, who is going to do it? Somebody going to do it. Somebody will always fill in the gap. If you lose your job, if you get fired, God forbid, if you were to pass, that position is going to be filled. Like, it will get done. You are not the savior, okay? We have a Lord and Jesus who is the savior. You are not the savior for people. It is okay to step away. It is okay to step back. It is okay to let go of. And for some of you, there are things that you have continued to do just because it's always what you've done. And yes, that has served you well, but now it's time, now it's time for something new. Now it's time for your next because your transition it's not going to be what you've always done because that's not a transition. So in order for you to get to your next, you got to do something that you haven't done before. And sometimes that is going to require you to shed and let go of the things that you've been doing, which have served its purpose. You did it well. You, you did what you needed to do. The relationship has ran its course. It's okay. And I, let me also say this. Sometimes we have to be reminded that when it comes to friendships, relationships, and things like that, it doesn't always have to end on bad terms. It doesn't always have to be this fighting match. It doesn't always have to be this whole big, huge falling out. Sometimes relationships simply just run their course. I have served my purpose in your life. You have served your purpose in my life. And that's that. It's no hard feelings. There's no malice. There's no no ill intent. It just is what it is. And sometimes we end up in those situations where it does become this huge falling out. It does end up becoming this issue because you try to continue to make a relationship work that's really not working, that no longer serves a purpose for either of you. It's not just, oh, you, you no longer serve a purpose in my life. You have also done what you need to. You, your service has also ended for that person as well. You have to be okay with letting things go and letting people go at times when you know that's what you need to do. So the next thing that I want to talk about is not really a point two. It's almost like a point one A because it's an extension of the shedding conversation. But that is keeping things with an open hand. And what I mean by this. So we've already talked about the shedding aspect as far as letting things go that you need to. The next part of that, as far as keeping things with an open hand, is being willing to let go of things, even when it feels like it's right. Even when it feels like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is this is something like you've attached yourself to. Because I feel like specifically as women, we have a habit. If we, especially as fixers, shall listen, when we are trying to make something work, when we're trying to fix something, we're trying to do something, we will hone in on that bad boy and we will stay there with it and try to make it work. And sometimes we can get so attached to an idea or a thing that the thought of it not working or the thought of it not being what is our next, we reject it. We reject what is actually for us 
because we've had this plan of it's supposed to go like this. It's supposed to look this way. It's supposed to be how I always envisioned it. It's supposed to be how I've set myself up for it to be. And when that is not the case, then we reject anything that doesn't look like this image that we have always created. And so when I talk about keeping things with an open hand, a lot of times as we are preparing for something, we have an idea in mind. Even when we don't know what is next, even when we don't know how we're going to get there, what it's going to look like, we typically have an idea in mind of how we think it's supposed to be, how we think it's supposed to feel, how we think it's supposed to come together, how we think it's supposed to connect. And so a lot of times with that, we end up putting ourselves and God into a box because we feel like it can only look one way. It can only happen one way. And a lot of times when, if you think about the things that God has done for you, typically it's not exactly the way that you thought it would be, but most of the time it, it ends up being bigger than what you could have ever imagined or envisioned for yourself. And we tend to think small and it's not even a thing of, you know, you don't, you don't think big enough for yourself. You don't shoot far enough. You don't shoot big enough for your dreams. It's like, we look at things and we do it based off of what we feel like we have the capacity for. And God tends to give us things and position us in a way that he gives us the grace that we need to be able to sustain it. But it's ultimately that what he has the capacity to sustain us for as well. And I say to keep things with an open hand, because as you are making plans for your next, as you are in a period of transition, as you're trying to figure things out, don't allow the plans that you've made for yourself to be so tightly held in your hand that you don't give God room to move. You don't give God room to change your plans. You don't allow anything to shift beyond what you have already planned and set up for yourself because you will end up ignoring and or rejecting what is next for you and where God is trying to take you to next because you're so focused on it doesn't look the way that I thought it would. This isn't how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to work like A, B, and C. And you're over here frustrated at F, Z, K, B, because it's out of order. This isn't how I planned for it to go. It was supposed to be like this by this age. It's supposed to look like this by this time of the year. We have all of these different plans and things. And when you hold things so tightly in your hand, it gives you less wiggle room. It gives you less opportunity to be open. I want to encourage you, and this is something I'm challenging myself in as well, is to allow yourself to be open. It doesn't have to look like the way that you thought it would. It doesn't have to go as planned. It doesn't have to make sense right now. But just be open to opportunity. Be open to things looking differently. Be open to things changing. Keep the things that you are planning, preparing for, keep them with an open hand. Because here's the thing about having an open hand with God. If he needs to change it, your hand is open. You're open and willing to receive the change. When you have something that you're holding on to that is clenched in your fist, it's very hard to get you to be, to have your heart softened enough to be willing to adjust. This is the biggest thing that I think can help us as we are trying to grow, evolve, go to our next is being able to adjust, being willing to pivot. That's another thing that I say all the time. There is so much power in the pivot. There is so much that comes with just your flexibility when it comes to what God is trying to do in your life. We have all of these plans that we create for ourselves. We have all of these different things that we set up for ourselves. And when you put yourself in a position where you don't allow that to be flexible, then anything that goes against that, it feels like opposition. Maybe you're not actually experiencing opposition, but God is trying to take you into a place where you're, where you're no longer focused on what you are capable of doing and how you can get yourself there, but you're allowing him to actually be the one to sustain you and you're actually allowing him to be the one to grace you for it. When you keep things with an open hand, it opens up opportunity as well because your mind is not just locked in and set on this one thing. God, whatever you want to do in this season, however you want to move in this season, wherever you want to take me, even if I may not understand it, I'm willing to rock with you. If you rocking, I'm rolling. Like we have to get to a place where we're able to say, 
God, I'm going to, I'm going to allow you to redefine my story. I'm going to allow you to change what I thought my plans were. I'm going to give you permission and freedom to do that because I don't want to block my necks. I don't want to be the reason why I'm ill prepared because I thought it was going to look like this. And so I've solely prepared for it to be this one way. And you got 14 other ways that it can be. And I missed the opportunity to be ready for that because I was so stuck on it has to look like this. You have to let go of that control and you have to let go of your need for it to look a certain way, to feel a certain way, or for it to be a certain way before you're willing to move or before you're willing to go on to the next, because that is going to keep you in a position where you feel like you're waiting when in reality you're stuck. You're not waiting. You're simply stuck because you're not allowing yourself to have the flexibility to be able to adjust and change when you need to. All right. Last thing I want to talk about is being okay with addressing your fears, actually like acknowledging them, talking about them, working through them. And there's really layers to this because on one hand, it's what we've always talked about as far as the fear of the unknown, the fear of not knowing what's next, not knowing how things are going to come together. But then there's also the having to address the fear of messing up, making mistakes, not getting it right, and being okay with that. Also the fear of what if I'm not good enough? What if I don't get it right? What if I fail? Be okay with addressing all of that and knowing that even if you don't do it exactly the way as planned, even if it doesn't turn out how you thought it would, even if you have a moment where you revert back, even if you don't feel all the way prepared, be okay with addressing and acknowledging them. Because a lot of times when we start talking about these things and we think about like, okay, well, what if, what if I make a mistake? Okay, then what? It's going to be okay. Why? Because you made mistakes before. And guess what? It's been okay and it's still going to be okay. As you start talking about those things and like really start getting, just getting stuff out of your head and start processing, if I fail, then what? It's going to be all right. You'll realize that a lot of the things that you're carrying as fear, it doesn't hold as much weight as it feel like it when it's in your head. When it's in your head, you're going to convince yourself that every fear that you have is going to come to pass, is going to be the worst case scenario every single time. And let me ask you this. When you truly think about your life so far, anytime you have thought of the worst case scenario of how something would work out, have you always ended up in the worst case scenario? I'm going to answer that for you. No, I don't believe that. Like it rarely ever turns out in the worst case scenario, but we carry around this fear all the time of how we think it's going to turn out. And it's typically not in the positive way. It's typically the worst case scenario that rarely ever happens. And so I want to challenge you as you are preparing, as you're in this place of waiting and you are unsure, you don't know what's next. You're in this place of transition, or maybe you do even know what's next. And you have all of these different thoughts in your head, this worry, this fear, this anxiousness. Allow yourself to speak it. Allow yourself to get it out of your head and talk about what are you anxious about? What are you afraid of? And just get that out of your head because as you start to talk about it, as you start to process it, you realize that this weight, this burden that you have been carrying, one, it ain't even worth it for real, but it's also not as heavy as it feels. A lot of things will feel heavier when you keep it inside because you're carrying all of that around. You feel that in your body. You feel that in your thoughts. You feel feel that. You got to release that. And I'm always, always, always going to encourage therapy, team therapy all day, every day. I think it's very beneficial for you to be able to have an outside party who can help you to process those things. Because sometimes we can like talk things out and then we can create further scenarios. Like be self-aware enough to know like, okay, am I able to process this in a way where I'm able to root these things in reality, where I'm able to actually acknowledge like, okay, girl, this... I know, I know what we're thinking. I know where we're at, but this really don't make sense when I start saying it out loud. If you can do that, okay, cool. But I do think that it's helpful to have a another party who can help you to see the holes that maybe you're not seeing or even to feel the holes that you are not aware of. 
But just allow yourself to really think about like, okay, what am I really afraid of? Why am I afraid of this? Okay, if this were to happen, then what? I'm going to be okay. I show him because I've always been okay and God got me. You have to have that confidence in knowing that worst case scenario typically never happens. Or if it happens, it's not an always going to happen type of uh, situation. And even if it does happen, it's not the end of the world. You're going to be okay. You got this. You have come out of things before that you didn't plan for, that hurt you, that disappointed you, that discouraged you. You were able to overcome that. And you are a person, you are a woman of resilience. So just as you have been able to overcome other things, you'll be able to overcome anything that, that you face when you're transitioning, where you're going into this next space. Don't allow yourself to talk you out of it because you're afraid. We all have things that we're afraid of. We all have these thoughts. We all have these things that make us feel like, but what if? Okay, but also consider the latter. What if it works? What if this is what you have been waiting for all of your life? What if this is literally setting you up to change the trajectory of your life and the generations to come after you? Let's consider those what ifs too, right? All right, that's everything that I have for you today. I hope that you are encouraged. Make sure that you share this with a friend. And until next time, don't forget, be whole, be healed, and be authentic. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning into a Change of Heart podcast. I hope you were encouraged and please take a moment to share with a girlfriend and don't forget to download the episode. Lastly, I would love to connect with you. You can follow me on Instagram at Angel C. Walston and at A Change of Heart Podcast. Have an amazing week and don't forget, be whole, be healed, and be authentic.